Good morning and welcome. I'm Joe McDermott, King County Council Member. I want to welcome everyone to District 8 and more importantly, welcome everyone to White Center Heights Park. Truly a perfect place to celebrate the successes of the Conservation Futures Program and urge its renewal through King County Proposition 1 next month. This project continues our county's long-term mission to increase public green space in incorporated urban communities where we are now and trails, natural lands, rivers, farmlands and forests. Working with the White Center Community Development Association, Southwest Youth and Family Services, North Highline Unincorporated Area Council, and other local cultural and community organizations, we are able to secure this space and take important steps to redress um, historic disparities in access to open space. And this is just one example of four decades long history of the Conservation Futures Program preserving truly the best places in our county, protecting mature forests, improving habitat for native salmon, strengthening our local economy, providing more um, recreational opportunities, and importantly, ensuring more equitable access to the outdoors. For today's press launch, we've lined up a few speakers to make remarks about all of the different ways Conservation Futures makes these impacts across our communities. Afterwards, we'd be happy to take a few questions um, from all of you. And for more on the accomplishments of this important program, I'd like to introduce Paul Witherstein, Witherstein Executive Director of the Issaquah Alp, um, Alps Trails, to present. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. The Issaquah Alps Trails Club knows of the health and lifelong benefits of a life lived wandering through and caring for forests and natural lands. Surrounded by wilderness as a child, I was free to explore, wonder, and dream of such places. And still today, through the teaching of the Snoqualmie tribe, I am learning to be even more mindful and aware of all living things on these lands and my duty to protect them for current and future generations. Hello, my name is Paul Winterstein, and I'm here today because of the Board of Directors of the Issaquah Alps Trails Club believes that everyone deserves access to natural places, and we support Proposition 1 so that all, me all people, and especially communities less fortunate than ours, can benefit from places preserved and protected by the fund. No place has benefited more than Issaquah Alps from King County's leadership in protecting the land. The, the three forested mountains of the Issaquah Alps, Tiger, Cougar, and Squawk Mountains, are home to wildlife and salmon-bearing streams and are laced with trails that allow people to get connected to the land and nurture their hearts, the will to be more worthy stewards. Our founder, Harvey Manning, called the Issaquah Alps the wilderness within. If this is the first time you are hearing that phrase, if, like me, you thought he was speaking metaphorically about something inside each of us, you would be correct. But he was also speaking quite literally about the wilderness within this great metropolitan area. Forty years ago, Harvey worked alongside King County and then Executive Randy Ravel to establish the Cougar Mountain Regional Wildland Park, which today is just part of more than 100,000 acres of forested, resource, and farmlands the wilderness within, protected by the Conservation Futures Fund. And it is a very large reason why this is one of the most livable areas in the country and a sought after place to raise a family and do business. But within this desirableness are the very seeds of why we need Proposition 1. The Conservation Futures Fund cannot keep up with the rising cost of land, and the fate of the next 65,000 acres sought to be preserved is in doubt meaning that many children in underserved communities will not have the opportunity to be shaped by wilderness as I was. The Issaquah Alps Trails Club calls upon all voters in King County to join us in renewing our commitment to our community of life and the life of the land that gives us so much. Vote yes on King County Proposition 1 in next month's election. Now I invite the representative of the people, Executive Dow Constantine, to talk more about his vision and leadership to preserve these lands now and into the future. Well, hello everyone. It is a pleasure to be back here at White Center Heights Park today. And thank you, Paul, uh, for reminding us 
of the long history of uh, King County protecting, working hard to protect what makes this place so special. You know, as uh, Paul mentioned, this has been a shared vision. It has protected some 100,000 acres across the county so far. The open spaces, the parks, the trails, the wilderness that I grew up with was the product of the, the shared vision of uh, elected and uh, cultural leaders, of citizen activists, of agricultural leaders, uh, of people who cared enough about this place to uh, step up and work to preserve it. And now it is the time for this generation to do its part, to continue this vision. Uh, last year I was thrilled to announce that we have so far managed to protect 16,000 acres of agricultural land. Uh, and that is great news. We have 13,500 more acres we need to protect. It's called out in our land conservation initiative. And our natural lands, under continuing pressure from climate change and population growth, uh, they, they are so valuable in, in capturing carbon, in providing clean air, in enhancing recreational opportunities, in protecting clean water and improving health. The forests do so much work for us. The farmlands promote a thriving agricultural economy. Protected river corridors provide salmon habitat, flood protection, recreational opportunities, and promote the health of Puget Sound. Trail corridors give us access to recreation opportunities. They increase non-motorized mobility and improve air quality. And I'll remind you that those trails are used now by many more people than when the Conservation Futures Fund was first established four decades ago. On the order of a million more people live uh, just here in King County and many, many more in the surrounding metropolitan region. We are racing to keep up with that population growth, racing to keep up with global environmental changes, racing against time to make sure we save these precious assets for those who will come after us. We're lucky to have with us a Sammamish Mayor Callie Clark. Uh, Mayor Clark is also a former Wildlands firefighter with the State Department of Natural Resources and serves on the board of East Side Fire and Rescue. She can speak to the dangers of wildfire and to the opportunities that uh, we have for making a real impact here locally on climate sustainability. Mayor Clark. Thank you, Executive Constantine, and thank you everyone for being here today. As Executive Constantine mentioned, I started my career in service as a wildland firefighter for the Washington State Department of Natural Resources. For eight years, I had firsthand experience on what it means to manage and conserve our green spaces. The wildland and urban interface is a crucial and delicate opportunity to slow wildfires and keep them away from our homes. Increasingly, fires aren't in the middle of wilderness areas anymore. They're in our backyard. It is so interesting to have had that experience and now to be serving as the mayor of a rapidly growing city bordering on some of the most beautiful forests, parks, and open spaces in our county. It is our job as neighbors and stewards to protect that, not just for our own enjoyment, but for the health of our region. Development along that interface between forests and rural suburbs increases the potential for buildings and activities that increases the risk of wildfire. By conserving those lands and preventing development in that interface, we have the opportunity to prevent wildfires in occupied areas and establish more sustainable, healthy forests that are not so susceptible to the raging wildfires that we have recently seen in places like California. Next, I am pleased to introduce Sarnisha Evans, who is fighting to protect what makes our community the best place to live as a board member on the King County Open Space Equity Cabinet and so much more. First of all, I want to say thank you, Mayor Clark. An excellent introduction of myself, I appreciate it. I want to thank everyone here today to really talk about the urgent need for more parks and open space in every community across our county. We live in a region with a strong history of protecting open space, yet not all of our communities experience the benefits of these public investments. Many communities have experienced and still experience a history of unequal, limited regional investments in parks, open spaces, trail access, which affect their daily lives, and limit their ability to lead healthy lives at that. 
People, especially children, are healthier and more active when they have access to parks, green spaces, and also the ability to have clean air. More than 20 million, excuse me, 20% of King County residents, and I want to emphasize that again, 20% of King County residents, 500,000 people do not live near a green space, a trail, or a park, detailing the legacy of systemic racism that we can and must start to dismantle. Over the years, leaders have made efforts to revise county code, make sure inclusive voices become part of the process, and help meet the equity gap of accessible, walkable green space for all King County residents. This effort is part of the Land Conservation Initiative Equity Framework. The LCI, as also referred to, has made efforts to identify these areas using interactive maps, highlighting developing opportunity areas. And it's these areas which will be primary focus of conservation efforts for the next 30 years. And it's these opportunity areas that represent approximately 45,000 new acres that King County intends to acquire to meet this equity gap. It is our ability to invest equitably, but also ensure that these opportunity areas and our community members will have walkable green spaces that are truly part of their homes, part of their communities, part of the places they soon will love. And that requires conserve our future, Proposition 1 to pass. So I urge voters to say yes to King County Proposition 1 and yes to eliminating disparities across park access. Also thinking through disparities as it relates to open space for communities especially communities with the greatest and the most acute needs across our county. And again, thank you all for being here. And I want to welcome Guillermo, whose family owns a family farm in King County and has been helping to lead this campaign for Proposition 1. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, beautiful morning today. Uh, thank you, Sarnisha. Uh, thank you, Executive Constantine, Councilmember Joe McDermott, Mayor Callie Clark, and Paul Winterstein. Uh, my name is Guillermo Sasueta. I'm a local farmer here in King County. I'm here to speak a little bit about why the Conservation Futures Program is so important to our agricultural communities. A little bit of background, together with my parents and siblings, and with support from various King County resources, private and nonprofit partners, in March of this year, our family officially launched our locally owned permaculture market vegetable farm. We serve a select variety of vegetables, sold at local farmers markets, restaurants, small grocers, and pop-up farm stands. Our vision is to produce high quality organic market vegetables. Our goals are to serve the needs of the issues caused by food insecurity and loss, to reduce dependence on regional markets for fresh produce and goods, and to inspire and educate others on the importance of responsible stewardship of our environment. I'm also a King County resident. I have lived and grown up in King County over the last 20 years. My family and I, back in early January, were faced with an eviction notice from our previous landlord. We had 90 days to pack our things and find a new place to live. Now, our family, primarily composed of working class, a family of immigrants, hospitality workers, childcare workers, restaurant workers, over the last five years, we have all been building out and developing our business plan for a family farm. Throughout this time, I have made multiple connections and sought resources from programs throughout King County, like the King County Farmland Preservation Program, the King Conservation District, the Washington Farmland Trust, and other critical groups like Business Impact Northwest. A little bit of background about farmland preservation. The Farmland Preservation Program began in 1979 as an initiative authorizing the county to preserve rapidly diminishing farmland. They currently manage over 15,000 acres of permanently protected farmland within King County. During our initial search for farmland, farmland preservation provided us with advice and has been supportive of our vision and goals for obtaining and preserving farmland and one day becoming homeowners. Ultimately, it was King County who recommended us and connected us to these other groups like Business Impact Northwest, the Farmland Trust, and others, and provided us with the proper resources to help make our dreams come true. So CFT and the Land Conservation Initiative together contribute to protecting farmland through a specific process called leveraging public and private partnerships that benefit both farming and fish habitat. Farmland preservation works with local farmers to keep critical farmland in production. 
and by using the Transfer Road Development Rights Program, provides a voluntary, incentive-based, and market-driven approach to preserve land and steer development growth away from rural and resource lands and into King County's urban areas. And now this is why this measure is so important to me and my family, and why I took time to volunteer and work to contribute to the success of King County Prop 1. Thank you all so much for listening. It's been a real pleasure being a part of this campaign, and my family thanks you for your support. Now I would like to invite King County Council Member Rod Dembowski, who has led work on conservation futures. Thank you again. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Guillermo, and good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is Rod Dembowski, and what a great day to be in King County. <laughs> I mean, wow. Um, Paul, Joe, Dow, Sarnisha, Mayor Clark, thank you so much uh, for joining this effort, and everybody here uh, who is coming together to make sure we pass Proposition 1 on the November ballot. The ballots are going to go out in a couple of days, and it is a big ballot. There's a U.S. Senate race. There's members of Congress. Uh, there's other there's charter amendments for the county. There's a lot of uh, state legislative races. It's a big, complicated ballot, but this is a very important item on it that we want to call voters' attention to. I was uh, struck by two things as I came in this morning. One, a sign, and another, a sound. The sign up on the corner here said, by the developer, big bold letters, we buy land. We buy land. The sound is the children across the street playing. And uh, I'm seeing two kind of competing things there. Uh, one is this insatiable growth represented uh, by the We Buy Land sign that is unstoppable. And we need that housing. We need folks to provide housing. Uh, but it, it is consuming our land. And the other is the sound of the children. They remind me of playing on Maplewood Heights Elementary Park. Uh, playground growing up and uh, being done with school and being able to go out uh, down the street to Maplewood Heights Park which was bought with forward thrust uh, money. Uh, kind of run around in Maplewood Creek, find tadpoles and little fish that was protected. Uh, learn to swim down at Henry Moses Pool in Renton, another forward thrust project. And, and to watch the vision of those leaders from the 60s and 70s and then carried on into the 80s with this initiative continue to buy land as somebody in public service. We've protected up in Bothell uh, the last land on the Sammamish River over a mile of waterfront for salmon habitat uh, with conservation futures. We've acquired the first public open space in Lake Forest Park on Lake Washington to connect people off the Burke Gilman Trail to the lake um, to give people access, people that wouldn't otherwise have public access. And this county under the leadership of our executive, has identified the last great 65,000 acres that we want to acquire. And we're well on our way to doing it. But this fund, the Conservation Futures Fund, is shrinking in its efficacy and its potency because of a 1% cap. What this measure does is restore it to its full power, from about three cents today to about six cents, a couple of bucks a month, about $2 a month for your average homeowner, incredibly affordable, incredibly meaningful for what you get in return. So we're asking the voters to give us the dollars we need to finish the job. Instead of two or three generations to finish the job of acquiring those 65,000 acres, get it done in one generation. Before the We Buy Land guys get those properties and the kids across the street who you hear out at recess won't be able to wade in the creeks play in the park, hike in the Issaquah Alps, which I did uh, with a high school teacher, Bill Longwell, who was a companion of Harvey Manning, and let those young folks that we heard playing outside today have the same opportunities for joy, for recreation, for exploring, for climbing, for mountaineering, that Executive Constantine had growing up here in West Seattle, that Joe had growing up here in West Seattle, and that today's kids have. Let's make sure that the next generations, as the Iroquois Nation talks about, seven generations forward, have the same opportunities that today's King County residents have. That's why everybody's here. That's why this initiative has been endorsed by an incredible array of environmental and civic and conservation organizations. It's the right thing to do. We've got to get it done on this ballot so we can finish the job uh, that is before us. 
thank you all for being here today, and I think now we're going to open it up for any questions. I think Dow will lead us on that, right? I thought you were. <laughs> I don't want to hand it off. I nominate you. Go ahead. Can you remind us what percentage might be uh, actual land in areas like this? You've talked about the uh, agricultural land, but I know people in the urban unincorporated areas especially might wonder what's in it for me directly. Yeah, I, I'm not going to be able to speak uh, very precisely about that. One, one of the, this is an area of emphasis that we've really begun to focus on over the last 10 years, and particularly with the Land Conservation Initiative where we uh, impaneled an equity cabinet to help focus on the unmet need in urban areas. One of the changes that we made was previously each city needed to provide a match in order to get county money to buy local open space. We changed it so that cities that have a lower tax base, places that don't have as much money, are able to get a greater share of county money to buy local lands. I cannot tell you off the top of my head, uh, but the campaign can get you what the percentage is that's contemplated to go to local uh, parks in an open space. But I'll remind you, something I've told you before, that's how I ended up in this business in the first place, is uh, working to save an, an urban green space uh, that was threatened with development. Uh, each of us has to sort of pick up the baton and run with it in our generation. This is a chance uh, for this generation to do that. I will remind everyone, because uh, I don't think we got to this, although it's in your printed materials, the original uh, Conservation Futures Fund was funded at six and a quarter cents per thousand dollars valuation. That's what the legislature authorized the King County Council four decades ago created. It has eroded away to now uh, 2.75 cents per thousand. Now, property values have gone up. So that is not a one-to-one a, a -one decline in funds, but the property we're trying to protect has also gone up in price. And there are many, many more people who need the lands, who need the agricultural lands, who need the trails and the forest. So the demand is rising, and our ability to protect these lands uh, is diminishing. And the, the interesting thing about this is if we, if we stick out long enough, ultimately we'll be able to protect the lands if they haven't already been lost, over the course of a century at this rate, 65,000 acres over the course of a century. If we pass this and simply restore the Conservation Futures Fund to its original level, we'll be able to accomplish this in a single generation. So that's the goal. Anyone else? Well, I really uh, want to thank everyone who joined us today. This has been uh, a fun and exciting campaign because so many people uh, care about this. This is one of our shared values uh, as, a, as, a, as a people and as a region. We want to protect what makes this place special. And, uh, and I've been particularly happy to be able to be involved in something that is not uh, somehow drawn along partisan lines. Uh, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, all care about our forests, farmlands, parklands, and trails. And I hope maybe we can build on that uh, sense of shared values uh, as we move forward. So thank you all for being here today.